In previous videos in this series, we've seen a variety of techniques for creating masks. In this video, we'll show how to use various shapes to create masks in specific locations in a template to create a collage for photos. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also download a written copy of this tutorial, along with sample images you can download to try out the steps yourself. Let's start by investigating an existing collage. Choose File, New from Template, choose Collage on the left, and scroll about halfway down to find this free template called 11 by 8.5 inch Scrapbook 02. If you don't have this one installed, click Download, then click OK. The template frame is a letter-sized image with holes cut out to hold five photos. These holes are simply rectangles with transparent fill. The layers palette has six items. The top layer contains the overall template image with its decorative squares and rectangles, borders for the photos that will be inserted, and photo cutouts. The five items below this are the layer groups that will each contain one collage photo. If I turn off the visibility of these groups, it's easier to see how the template is set up with this transparent photo rectangles. Now I'll open one of the photos I want to bring into this collage. If I want this photo to fill the rectangle in the center of the template, I'll look through my layer groups to find the one with the relevant cutout, which is image 2. I'll expand this layer group. On the mask for this layer group, the instructions tell me to drag the photo below the mask. So I'll make the Image 2 layer active. I'll now make the photo active, drag its layer onto the collage, and the new layer is placed just below its mask. Now I can use the Pick tool to shrink, move, or rotate the photo so that it fits inside its spot. No matter where the photo borders fall, the photo only appears within this spot. Now that we've seen how collage layers work, we'll create a collage template from scratch. I'll choose File, New, Choose Paper Size, choose U.S. Letter, and switch Width and Height for Landscape Orientation. I'll choose a solid yellow color and flood fill the image. To make it easier to line up the photo cutouts, there are two tools I can use, Grids and Guides. To turn on the grid, I'll choose View Grid. And to adjust the grid spacing, I'll choose View, Grid, Guide, and Snap Properties. Under Current Image Settings, I'll increase the grid spacing to 50 pixels in both directions. The grid lines that appear depend on how zoomed in I am. I don't need to use guides in this example, but to show how they work, I'll first choose View Rulers, then View Guides. To draw out a guide, I just need to click and drag from one of the rulers onto the image. For either grid lines or guides to be useful for positioning, I need to make sure grid and guide snaps are on which is also done in the View menu. But I'll turn off my rulers and guides. Now I'll start using the Selection tool to place the photo cutouts. The default selection shape is Rectangle, but for my first shape I'll change this to Rounded Rectangle. I'll start three grid spaces from the top left corner and draw it out to be horizontal. Before cutting out this shape, I want to paint a frame for the photo, so I'll choose a blue color and flood fill this rectangle. With the selection still active, I want to shrink the selection to get the rectangle that will hold the photo. I'll choose Selections, Modify, Contract, set the offset to 40 pixels, and click OK. Then I'll activate selection again, make sure the background color is transparent, and press the Delete key to remove this shape from the frame layer. What's selected now will become the photo cutout shape. I'll choose Selections, Promote Selection to Layer, and a new layer with this shape is placed on top, though the shape can't be seen because the entire layer is transparent. With this new layer selected, I'll click the New Mask Layer icon and choose Show Selection. Now the cutout shape can easily be seen. I'll move this entire mask layer group below the frame layer. Making the frame layer active again, and with the Selection tool still active, I'll choose a different selection shape, an ellipse. I'll place the center here, and set the ellipse size so that three grid squares remain along the borders. Then I'll repeat the steps. Paint the shape blue for the frame, offset the selection inward, activate selection and erase the ellipse center, promote selection to layer, create a show selection mask, and move the new layer group. The next cutout shape will be a heart. 
I'll activate the frame layer, click Preset Shape, and choose the heart. The line width is zero, and I need a visible background color. I also want to create the shape as a vector so that it can be modified. I'll drag to place the heart, rotate it, and resize to keep the same three grid squares all around. Next, I'll choose Selections from Vector Object. And because I want this vector object to go on the frame layer, I'll right-click on its vector layer and choose Merge, Merge Down. When I activate the Selection tool, the heart remains selected. From here, the steps to create this cutout will be the same as for the selection shapes. Flood Fill, Offset, Make Background Transparent and Delete, Promote to Layer, Create Mask. I'll move this layer group below the others. The final cutout shape will be a hand-drawn polygon. With the frame layer once again active, I'll click the Pen tool, set a solid background color, and a zero line width. I've checked Connect Segments and Create on Vector. Now I can drag out connecting segments that close to form a loop. To change this shape, I'll switch to Edit Mode and drag the node I want to relocate. I can also add more nodes by pressing the Control key. From here, the steps are the same as for the heart. Selection from Vector Object, Merge Down, Selection and Flood Fill, Offset Selection, etc. And note that the vector steps I've shown for preset shapes and pen shapes can also be used for making text cutouts. If I want a bit more of a sophisticated look to my collage template, I'll first turn off the grid. Then, to paint over the transparent cutout areas, I'll set the color to dark gray, then activate each layer below its mask and flood fill it. I could also rename the layers to look similar to the layer names of the collages provided in the Corel templates. Here are the four photos I'll bring into this collage. I'll activate the layer below the rectangle mask. Then I'll activate the photo that will occupy this spot, drag its layer in, and resize. And I'll repeat for the other three spots. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on creating collages using masks. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, please follow the link in the description below which will take you to this tutorial page in Corel's Discovery Center. Here you'll find a written version of this tutorial along with sample images you can download and follow along.